so mixed reality allows us to interact with the real world through our phone, like measure space and place 3D objects. So we are going to create a canvas application in which user will be able to measure space where he wants to place the object to define its length, depth and width. Then select an object that he wants to see in mixed reality. And then place this object in his room to see how it would fit. This object is going to have the same dimensions as the user defined in the first step. Such application could be easily used in logistics company or design agency and plenty other industries. So let's see what data we are going to use for our application. So I created a SharePoint list called Mixed Reality Furniture. And I placed several items in there like office chair, dresser, desk lamp and so on. So if you go to any of the items, we're going to see its title and an attachment. So in attachment, there is a 3D object that we are going to use to place our object in mixed reality. So to get such object, you can actually use view in 3D viewer on your laptop. It's basically pre-installed usually, but if not, you can download it from the store for free. And you can type in here, like I did chair, click enter and you get different objects. Let's select, for example, that one. And if we want to save it, we just click File, Save As, we save it to our location, and then we create a new object, new item here in our SharePoint list. We place it title and edit as an attachment, and it's going to be added to our list. So that's the object that we are going to use for our application. So in Power Apps, let's create a new Canvas application and let's call it MR App. And the format is going to be Phone. So as a first step, let's ask our user to do the measurements in mixed reality. So let's place a text label and let's type step one, measure your space in MR. Okay, let's align it to center, put it a bit up. Okay, and now we are going to type here measure in MR and place this element on our screen. And so when you click the button measure in MR on your phone, it's going to open the interface, which will allow us to measure distance from one point to another. So in parameters, let's select user of measurement from meters to centimeters. And you can also change the measurement type. So there are different types of it, but we are going to use distance basically to measure the length from one point to another one. And this is going to be our first step. So user can do as many measurements as he wants, but we need only three of them. So height, depth and width. So we want to ask user to define which of his measurements was what. So let's place a second text label for step two and let's call it identify dimensions. Okay. Let's place it also in center. And we're going to give the user three different drop downs for each of the dimensions. And he's going to select from the list of measurements that he did in first step, which one belongs to height and so on. So we're going to uh, define the items for our drop down, and it's going to be taken from our measure in MR element. So we select our element dot and here we select measurements. So basically whatever was measured by user is going to be returned in the drop down. So here, let's change its name to drop down height. And let's also place a text label for it. Uh, sorry, let's place it in our text. Okay, let's align it slightly to each other. And let's copy them and paste for to other dimensions as well. OK. 
Okay, so this one is going to be read. And we also need to rename our dropdown. And the last one is going to be our devs. And let's copy it as well and paste in the name of our element. For now, we do not see anything in the dropdown because we did not do any measurements yet. But once we do them, we are going to see all the measurements in this dropdown. So now let's place a button, which is going to take us to the next screen. So let's name it continue. Let's create a new screen. Okay. And by clicking this button, first thing that we want to do is we want to record all those dimensions in variables. So we're going to create three different variables. So let it be selected height. And we're going to take the value from our dropdown. Okay. Selected text. And we're going to do it two more times. Okay, let's change here to weights. Okay, and the last one is depths. What we're going to do as well is to navigate to the next screen. Let's check if it works. Okay, we're taken to the next screen. And now we're going to do our third step. So now on our next screen, we want to connect to our SharePoint list. So we go into our data, add data, here select our SharePoint. SharePoint connection. Here we select the site, so it's called development. And our list, mixed reality furniture, and we click connect. So as we are connected now, we can place a gallery to represent all items in our list. So we're going to need only the titles. And we can now see all of them. I'm going to change the navigation from scroll bar to usual navigation. Okay. And let's place also text label for the third step. So it's step three, select your object. And we are going to center it, align center. Let's also place a button that's going to allow us to return to the previous screen. Let's maybe make it an icon. And here I will type left and make it a little bit smaller. So on clicking this button, we are going to navigate to our previous screen, so screen one, so that the user could change the dimensions if he wants. Okay, let's move our list. And in here we do not want actually those arrows because we are not selecting and going further with the item. We just want to show the user which one is currently selected. So let's take the icon check. But it makes no sense if all of them have a check. So let's go to our parameter visible and make it visible only for the item that is currently selected. So if our current item is selected, it's going to be visible. So let's check how it works. And it works just fine. So we want to place yet another button. Center it. Let's type continue. And then clicking this button, we want to go to the next screen. So let's first create it. Now if we go back uh, to our second screen, we want to navigate to our screen tree. Okay, let's move it a bit up and let's see if it works. So on the last screen, we first want to show user everything that he selected. So let's type step four, verify data. Okay. And let's copy a return button from the previous screen and place it in here as well. Okay, but we're going to return to screen number two. 
Okay, so first we want to show what object he selected. So we refer to our gallery one, selected, and we just type title because that's the name of the column in our SharePoint. And we see that the office chair was selected. Okay, so let's center it and maybe change the font a little bit to make it more visible. Okay, let's go back, select something else, click continue and can, we can see that it changed. Next, we want to show also parameters like height, depth and width. So let's place a text label type here height and next to it another text label that is going to show the actual value okay and we recorded it in our selected height dot value okay so let's place it like this copy both elements Okay, and here it's going to be width and depth, and we are changing it in here as well. So selected width and selected depth. Okay, we do not see anything now because actually nothing was selected by user, but once we use our phone, we're going to see the dimensions in here. And the last step that the user should do is actually display his object in uh, mixed reality. So it's going to be step five. Let's just call it mixed reality. Okay, and let's place a button. Okay, if we type MR, it's called view in MR. And we need to define the source for the object. So the source for the object is going to be our attachment on SharePoint and we need to refer this button to it. So we once again going to use our, our gallery one, see what was selected and refer to its attachments. However, not to all attachments, but only for the first one. Okay. And we need to actually refer to the value of this attachment. So in this way. So as you can see, we right away see the link to which uh, we are going to refer to using the view in MR element. One more thing we want to do is in our parameters, we want to identify object widths, height and depth. That's basically why we did those drop downs for so that the object was not in standard way, but in dimensions that we ourselves defined and measured. So the unit of measurement we need to here change as well to centimeters. And let's go to our parameters object devs and select basically uh, our, par uh, our variable. Okay, here we need to click dot and select length. Because our measurement, uh, we can refer to basically several parameters of it, like height, volume, segments, unit, and so on. But we need the one that is called length. Okay, and let's in here also maybe change it to length, like this, so that it would display the correct value. Okay, so in here we go to object height and do the same, so select it height dot its length okay and the last one here using also our variable dot its length okay so it's blank for now but it's going to change once once we use our phone okay so we are now set up and we can actually use our phone to test out our application so let us see the results of our development. First, I'm going to measure the distance in mixed reality. So a user interface appears and I can see my room. Let's say I want to place an office chair in front of my desk. So I'm going to start measuring. First, the depth of the chair and let's make it around 44 centimeters. 
So for the width, let's do around the same, so also 44 centimeters. So for the height, I need a flat survey, so I'm gonna use my door for measurement. I'll make the height of, let's say, approximately 100, 105 centimeters. So I can see my measurements on the screen, and now I can measure more or submit them. So now I need to select that height was 105 and width and depth both 44. Next, I will select office chair in my list and click continue. So all the data is correct and I can now place the chair in mixed reality. So the camera detects the floor and I can now place the chair in front of my desk. And we can easily adjust the placement of the chair and move it left or right. I can see it from different angles, which is pretty cool, and the shadow on the floor is amazing. We can also make it bigger or smaller if we want. So let us now place a 3D laptop on the desk. So I'm gonna measure my laptop for comparison. So let's measure the depth, and it's going to be around 27 centimeters, so it's going to be the same as height of the laptop, and let's make the width around 38 centimeters. So in our drop now, we actually only need to change the width to 38, and let's now select a laptop from our list, click continue, and place the object in mixed reality. So I will open my laptop so that we could see the sizes and I'm placing it on my desk. Okay, so I can turn it around, I can move it also. Let me also move my laptop a little bit. So actually the sizes look pretty similar and it really looks very realistic on the desk. So that's how in 20 minutes we managed to create a fully functioning mixed reality application in Power Apps.